The grand entrance of the Silverquill School of Wizardry stands before you, the towering wooden doors beckoning you inside. Shim Black, your faithful companion, grumbles under his breath about the cold dampness of the stone steps leading up to the entrance. What do you do? I ask Shim what's the matter as we make our way inside. Shim grunts and mutters about not being a fan of magical institutions before grudgingly following you inside. Once you're inside the warm halls of the school, you ask Shim what's bothering him. He responds with a scowl, it's just the vibe of this place. I don't like all these snooty wizards and their high and mighty ways. You know, Shim, I'm a snooty wizard. Shim rolls his eyes at your comment and grumbles. Just because you're a wizard doesn't mean you're a snob. He looks around the school and nods. I guess this place isn't so bad, as long as I don't have to stay here for too long. Well, come on, Shim. Uh, and with that, I walk over to wherever the headmaster is. Shim looks at you with a scowl, but follows you towards the nearest notice board. After a few moments of reading, you locate the headmaster's office and begin making your way that way. The halls are bustling with students and teachers chattering and hurrying to their classes, but you eventually find the headmaster's office, a set of double doors with a gold plaque beside them reading, Headmaster's Office, Professor Albasir's Sweetbriar. You knock on the door and hear a voice say, Enter. Instead of entering, I do a little dance. You do a little dance in the hallway, much to the confusion of the students and faculty walking by. Some of the students even giggle at your silly display. Shim shakes his head and grumbles. You're really something sometimes, Theobald. Let's try instead. Let's be cats. You find yourself in a cozy living room filled with plush furniture, cardboard scratching posts, and toys scattered about. The sun is shining through the windows, casting warm spots on the floor. Sammy is curled up on a comfy armchair, purring contentedly. What would you like to do? I'm going to do a really big stretch, and I'm going to cough up a hairball. You stretch out your legs arching your back and extending your paws as far as they can go. After a satisfying stretch, you feel a tickle in your throat and cough up a hairball onto the carpet. Sammy looks up at you with mild interest before deciding it's not worth investigating and settles back into her nap. What would you like to do next? I'm going to challenge Sammy to a fight. You crouch down and start stalking towards Sammy, playfully swishing your tail back and forth. Sammy looks up at you with a curious expression, then jumps down from the armchair and starts chasing you around the room. You leap onto a nearby sofa and turn to face Sammy, ready for a mock battle. The two of you circle each other, batting at the air and taking playful swipes with your paws. Who do you think will win the fight? I would win the fight, but being a, a very kind cat, I actually let Sammy win the fight. Um, and afterwards, I am going to go look for a snack. Just as you anticipated, Sammy puts up a good fight, but you ultimately let her win with a fake surrender. She puffs up her chest in pride, meowing victoriously. Deciding there's no point in getting too competitive with a friend, you let her have this one. You saunter over to the kitchen, sniffing around for a snack. You notice a can of tuna on the counter, just waiting to be opened. What would you like to do next? Let's try a different one. Um, you know what, let's go to space. No, even better. You find yourself in the wreckage of your spaceship on the planet Zarnok 9. The planet is a hostile place with extreme temperatures that shift rapidly, ranging from scorching heat to sub-zero cold, making it nearly impossible to explore without proper gear. Its atmosphere is toxic, and the clouds are made of sulfuric acid. It's a dangerous place, 
and you'll need to work quickly to survive. What do you do first? Uh, the first thing I do is I check what my inventory is like. What kind of things do I have? You search through your inventory, which consists of a survival kit, a first aid kit, a flare gun, a communication device, a supply of food and water, and a map of the area. Your co-pilot, Roy, has the same gear. You quickly realize that your survival kits are not enough to keep you alive for long. You'll either need to find more resources or get off this planet as fast as you can. What's your next move? Yeah, meta question. Um, do I know how long it'll be until somebody comes by to pick us up? Sorry, there is no way to predict when or if someone will come to rescue you. Feel free to take an action in the meantime. All right, in that case, I... Um... I defer to Roy and I say, I'm going to take a nap. How about you figure this one out? Roy nods and takes charge. He suggests that you hoard your resources for now and find a nearby shelter to properly rest and replenish energy. He also points out that the wreckage of the spaceship may have some salvageable parts that could be useful, like solar panels and oxygen regulators. You both head out to explore the nearby area for a feasible shelter location. After some searching, you find a cave entrance that seems to be slightly warmer than the outside temperature. It could serve as a good shelter for now. What do you do next? I do a little dance. All right, now we're going to go into something else. Uh, you know, let's try. Um, you know what? We're going to do a bank run. You are Jan Yellen. 